When we talk about set and drift, what we're really talking about is the effect of tidal flow on maritime navigation. If you remember the last video, I mentioned specifically that we're ignoring the effects of set and drift. Well, today we're going to look into it and see how you can work with both set and drift on a nautical chart. Remember that we use the example of our vessel steering 000 degrees true. In the absence of any other forces, the vessel will travel 000 degrees true. But if there's any tide running, chances are that her track over the ground will be slightly different. Let's have a look with a strong tide running towards the west. Now you can see that she's still steering 000, she is pointing north, and she is still travelling along a track through the water of 000, but crucially all that water is now also moving. If we compare this track to her previous track, you can see the effect that the tide has had. In navigation, we work with both of these tracks. The first track here in blue is called the water track. It's literally the track that the vessel takes through the water. The convention is to draw the water track with a single arrow on it. The other path, the one in green, we call that the ground track. This is the one you're really concerned about. It's the track that represents the actual position of the vessel with reference to the ground. You need to make sure that your ground track doesn't cross any features that could cause you concern. And we're talking about shallow soundings, wrecks, restricted areas and things like that. The ground track is represented by a set of double arrows. Now, for those of you who are familiar with how vectors work, you will know that we can add a third vector to be able to work between these two that we've already plotted. We know that the final result is going to be the ground track, as that's the one that the vessel actually follows. From that, we know that the third vector is going to run from the end of the water track towards the end of the ground track. We put three arrows on this so as to avoid confusion with the other two. And this third vector actually represents the tide. Remember, vectors contain speed and direction information. The direction of this tidal vector gives us the set. In this case, we can see the set was 270, which ties in with what I told you earlier when I said we were going to add a westerly current. The length of the vector gives us speed, and this speed is related to drift. So let's see if we can work out the actual tide that I applied. We've already found that the set is 270, but what about that drift? For that, we need to find the speed contained within this vector. And to do that, we need both the length of the vector to get a distance and the time that the vector applied. Finally, we will find the speed using that distance and that time. For the time, we need to consider the starting time and the ending time. So we started out with a noon fix at 12 o'clock and we reached our final position at 1800 where we took a set of evening sights. So the time period was six hours. We can then measure the distance of the tide vector to work out the distance that we have been set over those six hours. Distance is 42 miles. Granted, this does seem extreme, but this is just an example for now. Finally, to get the speed of the tide, we use speed equals distance over time, so we divide our distance by six hours to get a speed of seven knots. The speed is the drift. So we've seen how you can find the tide if you know your water track and your ground track. But what about the other way around? Say you've plotted the track that you want to follow. You've plotted your ground track. But you want to know the course that you are going to steer to keep your vessel on that ground track. Basically, you want to know what your water track needs to be. Let's set up with the initial information. You've fixed your position here at 9 o'clock. You're due to arrive here at 12 o'clock, so three hours later. For this example, we'll say that you know that in this area, the current is always present and is always running 090 degrees at a rate of two knots. What course do you need to steer? And what speed through the water do you need to make arrival on time? Let's plot our fix and our destination and give both of them a time. We want to follow a ground track between them so we can draw that on as well. We know that the ground track is made up of the water track plus the tidal vector. And we actually know the tidal vector. We know that it's 090 at two knots, so across the three hours we're plotting, it will have made us drift six miles east. I'm going to plot my tidal vector at the end here, pointing towards the final position. Remember, we want to end up at the destination, so the vector points towards the destination. And finally, the water track is just going to be the line 
joining our initial position to the start of the tide vector. This means that water track plus the tide equals ground track. To find the course to steer, we just measure the bearing of the water track on the compass rows. Remember to turn this into a compass course if you're using a magnetic compass. Check out the video in the card if you're not sure how. Finally, to find the speed through the water that we need, just measure the length of the water track and divide it by the three hours that our plot is covering. We find we need a speed of 12 knots through the water. So you've now seen both how to calculate a tidal vector and how to use a tidal vector to find a course to steer. With practice, you'll become more comfortable using vectors and we'll start to see how useful they are in navigation, not only for ground track and water track, but also in applications like radar plotting and search and rescue. Until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.